hello, good morning. Welcome to this week's serving of Mickey Waffles, a Disney podcast where we cover everything from parks, movies, and merchandise. My name is Sinead. My name's Kate. Hi, guys. How's it going? I'm good, Kate. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I've got two exciting things. Yes. Oh, no. Which one should I say first? Uh, the second one. Oh, no. What? <laughs> You know what say is Sinead? You know what say is? Are you seeing like this one because it was slightly less important than the other one? Oh. But not that less important. By this slightly, is very I mean, important. Like, we have a very special guest. Like point 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 five percent less. Oh. We're joined by the lovely Sandy. Yay! Hi. Even if I am the less important person here. No! <laughs> the other thing wasn't even a person. What are you talking about? <laughs> so now we have one of the exciting things out of the way. What's the other thing, Kate? It's our 100th episode! Hey! <laughs> it is indeed. How have we been chatting on about this? Well, tech, it's definitely more than 100 because we have all those mini waffles, but that's besides the point. 100 episodes. Wild. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thanks. Thanks, unimportant person. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sandy, how are you? We haven't had you on in a while. I'm great. Great. No. Back from DLP, got some DLP blues, but okay. it's fine. That's oh, good. It's nearly Christmas. Oh, don't. Correct. No, I'm sorry. It is Correct. nearly Halloween. No. <laughs> it is nearly I'm going to boot you out of this meeting. It's the 19th of October. We're halfway through October. Yeah. Now, I would say there's a breeze in the air, but it's not. It's very warm. <laughs> it's alarmingly warm. It's too warm. Oh, my God. I went out with, like, a jacket and a jumper on yesterday, and I had to, like, remove the jacket. I was like, I'm going to die. No, every morning I wake up, time. and it's dark and wet, and I'm like, ooh, nice, awesome. And then it's like, boom, 20 degrees. I'm like, oh, wild. What the <laughs> fuck do I wear? <laughs> I do not agree. I do not agree with the weather the way it is currently. But so we're going to be having a chat with Sandy about her recent trip and Sandy is currently with child. So we're going to be discussing what DLP is like pregnant because that's not a thing me and Kate can talk about. Ever. No. (laughs) Never. Good luck. (laughs) So yeah, we'll have a chat with Sandy about that momentarily. But first, how have you been, Kate? Yeah, fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good, 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 good. Nothing exciting. What have I been doing? I went to go see Six. Saw Six with Amy. That was fun. Um, We're going to go see Heathers this weekend. Is Sam also seeing Heathers on Saturday? I feel like she is. Is it Saturday? I don't know. I feel like I'm going to ask. You're lucky I remember my own schedule, let alone other people's. (laughs) I'm going to ask Sam. Day to day, I'm like, where the fuck am I? What am I doing? <laughs> um, we're going to go see Heather's. And then I had other tickets for Heather's because I was supposed to be going with my friend Sally, but she has moved to London. And the absolute bitch said she's not going to come back for one evening just to see Heather's with me. So um, I went, got onto Ticketmaster and I was like, hey, I can't go to this. Can I have my money back? And then within four minutes on a Sunday, they were like, yeah, here's your refund. Amazing. Yeah. Love that. I mean, I haven't actually got the money. It's going to take five to seven working days, but that's fine. That's, that's fine. the bank's problem. But like Ticketmaster were like, yeah, here, take take your refund. Cancel your tickets. I was like, Beautiful. wow, thank you. Uh, Spix was great. What else? I saw James Bond. We saw the original Transformers movie. They were holding a special screening in Dundrum. Um, what else? We're going to go see Dune on Friday, which... nice. I felt the same way about Bond as well. <laughs> and there is cinema support. You're there for the popcorn and sweets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? It was Ellen's birthday today, but we celebrated on the weekend. I saw photos. It was rather hilarious. She had a make your own cocktail station, Jeez. which involved me and Ed making cocktails for everyone. <laughs> nice. Um, it was fun, though. Um, I feel like that's all the important stuff or the interesting stuff. Okay. So yeah, it's been good. Been all, nice. all G. What about yourself? Uh, I have just been in full Halloween mode. Of course. Um, there's a graveyard at the front garden. We have about seven or eight pumpkins to carve. Um, and went to go see Halloween Kills at the weekend, which... Oh, was it shit? 
I didn't think it was shit because everyone's saying it's shit. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> don't like it, but I think it kind of had a difficult, like, it had a difficult premise. So this trilogy is taking place after the first one. So the, the start of this trilogy came out in 2018. Then there's this one. And then there's the next one, which is called Halloween Ends. Well, because we know Halloween ended Ends comes out next year. Clearly nothing was going to happen to Michael Myers in this movie. So this movie was just kind of like, cool. He's just going to go around and kill an awful lot of people. Um, and then it just was another Halloween movie to have before the final one. So it was kind of a Bridget movie. It was always going to be a bit meh. They had the best people in the whole movie, though, are the Johns. There's Big John and Little John. They are spook- they're a spooky little gay couple. Have moved into the Myers household and they are my favorite humans because they just walk around being like, Big John, are you okay? I'm okay, little John. How are you? And they're just my favorite people in the world. Like, I just, they made me so happy. So I understand why people didn't like it, but I had fun. It was great. We had gone and like played mini golf and gone for drinks and pizza and stuff beforehand. So I was in a great mood, anyways. So I had a good time. Um, very excited for us to go see Heather's on Saturday. Sam is seeing Heather's on Saturday. She did respond. She's wow. also going to be there Saturday night. So Exciting. what time? Um, She'll be there an hour before the show, though. Oh, absolutely. Of course she will. She'll be there. Like, the, the door is usually open an hour before the show. She'll still be there waiting for the door to open. Yeah. Um, herself, Una, and Zoe, and her boyfriend, and Brian, they're getting food in a, uh, a place. I won't say the place, because why not? Um, but if we wanted to meet up with a drink, with a drink, for a drink, before or after... Oh yeah, maybe before. After it's probably too late. Why are we making plans right now? Uh, I don't know, but here we are. <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we do. I'm making waffles. Should we, she, should we get to the news? I literally caught myself there, and I was like, "Oh, I'm about to make full plans." <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get on to a bit of news? Yes, some news. So, uh, one of those fun weeks where there's actually DLP news. Um, <laughs> so one of the most exciting things to come out of DLP this week was the announcement of oh, this particular tweet's not going to open for me, is it? Uh, is that basically everything's coming back. It's going to be, it's going to be like a whole new world, um, come December. So the parades and the fireworks will return to Disneyland Paris. Illuminations will be back December 21st and Disney stars on parade will be back January 20th. January 10th of 2022 is what I was trying to say. Um, so because Illuminations come back, comes back December 21st, that means the castle will indeed be ready before the end of the year, yeah. which is very exciting. Um, they've also announced the buffets are coming back. Just going to throw that one in there <laughs> as a thing that's coming back. Um, so October 20th of 2021. So tomorrow. Wow. There we go. Uh, <laughs> look. Time is so irrelevant. Um, yeah, so uh, proper buffets are coming back. Uh, uh, these are basically all because there's been a lot of restrictions starting to lift in France. And yeah. so DLP can start doing shit again. Yeah. I don't know if, because one of the things that I would like to do um, either on this trip or the one that I have in March is a Plaza Gardens breakfast. But I'm obviously not going to go unless like characters back because the food is fine. And as we all know, I love the scrambled egg. But it's not quite worth the price if you're not getting like the cute photos with the characters as well. So I'm hoping by at least my trip in March that characters will be back in dining. Yeah, I was I was thinking that myself. Like there's a couple of dining experiences in Disney World where in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, they would be fun. But then thinking about the fact that there's absolutely no characters there and they've changed the whole dining experience. I'm like, fuck, yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like you see vloggers and stuff and they're like, oh, this looks this is great and this i'm like i'm not paying 52 dollars for that no. i like there's so much more my those 52 dollars could go towards i could get a nice pizza in disney springs and then also probably half of the spirit jersey why would i no no yeah, no i no. get you <laughs> I prioritize I this shit <laughs> i'm one of the things that was announced this week that i'm super excited about because i'll get to see it is the brand new christmas parade um, yeah. So Mickey's Dazzling Christmas Parade will be launching on November 13th. It's going to be a daytime and nighttime parade, which different versions thrills me no end. Dude, I love so it. many lights. So many lights. Like the visuals for it look adorable. Like it's just so stinking cute. So the 
plan is Santa, with the help of Mickey and friends and the Disney princesses, will light up town, the town square Christmas tree at a show stop during the nighttime performance, which is adorable. So does mean I'm going to have to watch it twice, different times, which is fine by me. Oh, I'm no. Because love a parade. What else would you do in DLP that you've been to 20,000 times? I know. <laughs> so, yeah, there's loads of visuals are up on DLP Report. There's a cute video up on the DLP Report Twitter as well. So highly recommend going and looking at those. But I'm so excited to get to see it. I'm just glad there's going to be a parade on. Would I like to get to hear the Stars on Parade music? Of course. But I can see that in March. That's fine. Um, what do another... you guys think of it? Oh, sorry. Go on. What do you guys think? Do you like the look of it? Have you seen it? It looks uh, great. It looks yeah. The costuming, everything looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks uh, so cute. One of the funnier things I saw was, it's not on any of these pictures, but they had a picture of Snow White dressed up as a Christmas princess. Um, <laughs> I don't know to say this without being racist. She wasn't very Snow White looking. <laughs> Like at all, yeah. Like the Snow White feeling, it's uh, more so. Snow White is the palest of all princesses, and she was not. (laughs) Yeah, it's fine. But in terms of like character integrity, nah. (laughs) Yeah, there. Like you, you kind of forget how bad a lot of the DLP face characters can be. They have some good ones. They have some great ones. We've talked at length about the good Flynn. Um. But some of them are just like, uh, hmm. but I just more so love that they took a picture of her and put her in the promo. Oh, she, yeah. I think I might have seen it on Facebook rather than Instagram or something. But um, I was just like, what? You, you're not Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see a new Christmas parade. <laughs> Do you know how much I was excited for it? I was like, mm, I wonder how much it would cost for me to go to DLP in a weekend. <laughs> and then I was like, mm, that's dangerously close to going to America. I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie i priced up the same thing and then realized shit you can't, you can't fly, fly. No. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it's yeah it looks fun um then also mickey's magical fireworks formerly called bonfire um are confirmed for november 2nd 4th and 9th marking the first return of fireworks shows it is not paris this year they will take place for the first time in disneyland park um, I saw a argument about this on one of those DLP pages, and a woman oh. was like, "It says it's in Disney Park. What is Disney Park? Please help!" And all the comments oh, were so snobby. God. They were like, "Disney Park doesn't exist. That's not a thing. It's either the Village or Disneyland Park. Which are you talking about?" And she was like, Ugh. "It just says Disney Park. I don't know where that is." And they were like, "Well, you're stupid because that doesn't exist." <laughs> Jesus Christ! It oh was so God. funny. It People was are so, so aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Christ alive. It's more so that they also don't really know what they're talking about, and that's what really gets me. (laughs) Um, The park hours for DLP have been made available now until November 30th. There are going to be a couple of late closes for Disneyland Park, which is great. So they'll be closing at 10pm on the 13th, 20th and 27th of November. And they're also slowly but surely bringing back extra magic time to Walt Disney Studios. So that'll be available on November 10th through 12th and then also at the weekends. And then something that made me very sad is the year-long It's a Small World refurbishment is now going to start on November 29th. So I won't bloody get to go on it on either of my next two trips. Oh, no. Oh, Damn gosh. I love p- It's a Small World. 10 p.m. is quite late for the 27th of November. It'll be fucking right? freezing. It'll be so cold and really so cold. Dark. But can you imagine how much fun Big Thunder Man would be? Oh, I thought you were going to say illumination. So I was like, no, no, <laughs> no, it would not be fun because it's shit. <laughs> um, I am so the fact that Enchantment hasn't. I know we're talking about Enchantment later, but the fact that Enchantment hasn't been as big a success as people were hoping for, I'm really worried about the new show that's going to come with the 30th. Just saying, just put just putting that out there. Just give us dreams again. That's all we want. Yeah, I'm like really worried that they're going to do the whole IP. Put an IP. What's new? What's happening? Because it just it's outdated so quickly. I as long as it's not a live action. Live action beauty the beast. 
<laughs> Emma Watson, get off my castle. Um, so an interesting thing: physical distancing is no longer required at Disneyland Paris. Yeah. Uh, traditional meet and greets still remain unavailable. Uh, masks are still required everywhere, except when eating or at designated photo spots. And a health pass is also still required. So, if you don't have one of those negative tests or fully vaxxed, you can't get in. Yeah. How was like distancing and stuff? Because like I know it's like in GLP at the best of times. Uh, some cultures really understand queuing and giving people space. There are a lot of cultures that go to DLP that just like to breathe down your neck. How how was it when you were there, Sandy? Um, compared to this time last year, like obviously we went October last year and everyone was following the rules. This time they did not exist. Right. Like not a hope. But to be fair, because I was just a bit conscious, obviously being pregnant and stuff, I was saying it to people just to take a step back. Nobody batted an eyelid. No one rolled their eyes, gave out. They took the step back. It was fine. Okay. So once you kind of pointed it out to someone, it was grand. Um, Bing was in the queue for, I think it was Space Mountain. And yeah, it was either Space Mountain or Star Tours, one or the other. And there was a lady behind him with her child. And there was a group of, now I don't want to point fingers but I think there were Belgians that were behind that lady again um and that woman he said looked so uncomfortable like she was physically looking uncomfortable and he just let her go in front of him so that there was another person in between but other than that we didn't see anything wild either okay but no light cues didn't there was no distance (laughs) same in restaurants Um, there wasn't huge spacing between tables and stuff. Right. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Can't wait. I'm excited to show to people. <laughs> sir, sir. <laughs> Do you know how many people have died in your country? Please. <laughs> Love it. Um, another thing that was announced recently, I can't remember when it was announced, but sometime recently, um, the soiree for Halloween is still going ahead this year. Um, it's gonna be they're just doing the one on October 31st and um, it says get ready for a devilishly frightful night uh, yeah um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so the visuals for it look really cool I haven't heard any of the details about it I don't know what they have planned for it because especially the fact that like when we did the soiree the only thing to do was meet and greets Mm. And if they're not doing meet and greets, really, what are you? What, what do you do? So I'm very intrigued to see what actually takes place at this soiree. I wonder will they even do the parade? Because the Halloween parade is generally quite decent on the soiree. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Well, we'll see. No, no, we'll see. Um, so one of my favorite things to happen, uh, well, not favorite, I suppose it's bad for the people. Um, but New Forpe uh, has been taking oh a big hit lately because turns out, now here, is it only New Port Bay where the custodial staff are outsourced? That's why we had such a shit time in New Port Bay. That's what I was saying. I had a fun. No, Ed did not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I turned around to him and I was like, this makes total sense. This is exactly why we had such an awful time that time because this person said it and he was like, it was so long ago. It was so long ago. And I was like, that is irrelevant. <laughs> he was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so basically there has been strikes and protests by custodial employees of a third party contractor used by Disney to cut costs, continue into a third day outside Disney's Newport Bay Club, disrupting some of the operations. But what I think is even more hilarious is that the actual Disney staff who work front of house were like, tough shit, ladies and gentlemen, sleep on the floor. Like, are you telling me that none of them could have gone up and hoovered the floors and worked like the washing machines in the long la- the laundry room? You're telling me no one. They- Disney had no way of fixing this so that guests could sleep in bedrooms. Like, if it's just if it's just not the most DLP thing and the most Newport Bay thing. Yeah. No. If you are new to Mickey Waffles, hi, hello somewhere way back beyond in 
2019 it probably is even before episode 10 there is the most unmerciful rant oh. of what we experienced in you Newport sh- Bay if you've to not the point to that it, you should it's they great gifted us <laughs> each meal vouchers to the value of 150 euro each and our stay wasn't much more than 300 euro so that'll tell you how shit a time we had it was- and then also we emailed them afterwards being like hey we're actually going separately with our partners could we all get one and they were like yeah sure <laughs> They gave us so much money and food. Whatever you want, babes. Time. <laughs> Just shut so. the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, basically there was children sleeping on the floor. Front of house staff didn't give a fuck. Like those cast members didn't care. Nobody was helping anyone. They were refusing to give people refunds. People were asking for refunds and they were giving them 20 euro meal vouchers. And they were like, well, my child's on the floor. <laughs> um... So yeah, and then going back to one of those Facebook groups, that led to a massive rant of all other people being like, this is disgusting. It was the most disgusting hotel I've ever been in. It's such a facade. Like, it looks so nice on the outside, but once you get inside, everything's dirty. Everyone's rude. And I'm like, yes, preach. (laughs) I just think it's mad considering how close it is to Sequoia Lodge, where every cast member, bar maybe 1%, is the kindest being in the entire world. Love them. It's just... Love it's mad. Life. It's so mad. It's like they do a personality test on them and they're like, where do you need, where are you going to work? Bitch, oh, you poor bae. <laughs> Want to be an angel? Sequoia Lodge. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So that's a, uh, yeah, very DLP thing. Um, we've mentioned about the premier access that's available uh, on certain attractions in DLP. So they've now started a show version of that called Secure Your Seat, um, which is also known as Guaranteed Access, is now available uh, through the app for the Rhythms of the Pride Land show, which is going to be starting on October 23rd. So next Saturday, no, this Saturday, the day after this episode comes out. There we go. Um, And it finishes up on January 9th. So the seat booking upcharge is priced at 15 euro, 13 pounds or 17 dollars. Jesus Christ. Um, is, I've seen a lot of people who have paid for this because they love this show and they would rather, because anytime we've seen the show come back, the cues for it are crazy. Yeah. And I've seen people online be like, yeah, we've family for it. And I've all, we've paid, I've paid 13 pounds for all of them because we would rather just walk in to see it and not queue. And I'm like, that's over 50 pounds. <laughs> Yeah, like don't get me wrong. If it was something that I, I, I'm, I don't know if I really want to see. It. If queues are massive and it is something that I want to see, for the sake of fifteen quid each, would I potentially pay it? Sure, but I don't know if I will. I probably won't bother going to see it. Probably not this trip, anyways, because it's been so long since I've been to DLP. There's other things I would rather do. I also wonder: show. is there a limit to them, or are they just like, hey, if everyone wants to pay, everyone can pay, and no one can see it for free? I think I there know. is a limit. I, th- I think I've seen someone on Twitter. Couldn't tell you who. That there's a limit for Mastercard re- card reservations. There's a limit for paid, and then the rest is oh free. Okay, well at least that's something good. Good, oh, good, good. And at least they're still offering the Mastercard thing. So if you yeah. have a Mastercard, you can go to guest relations at the front of the park and you can reserve a seat if there is still availability. If you really want to do that, I would do that very, very first thing in the morning. Um, and you can get your seat that way if you so wish. Um, Disneyland Paris is launching a new accessibility program on December 3rd. Guests will now self evaluate and receive one of the five access levels for a tailored visit based on capacities. Companions will be recommended, but no longer mandatory or comped. Details below. This feels like something I should have read beforehand. We want to focus our efforts on guests who need it the most. Claims, <laughs> claims, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> not even states, claims Disneyland Paris as they present to us the complete reimagining of this critical program, which applied to 125,000 guests in 2019. Well, that's kind of, well, no, it's not outdated if, um, if we've um, been closed for so well. So there's priority access, which will guarantee, as does the green card today, immediate access to various attractions. Um, the second category is access facilitation card 
um, will have the benefits of the current orange card with appointments, but will now only be available to holders of a medical certificate, which show a long-term disability. Um, oh, they keep saying in French, I'm not saying in French. There are 30 such disabilities, which range from insufficiencies to strokes and other grave and chronic disabilities. There is an official list. Then there's a priority access wristband themed to Thumper for some reason. Uh, will adorn the wrist of expecting mothers oh, uh, to guarantee them. Oh, should have been Bambi! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, will adorn the wrist of expecting mothers to guarantee them a quick and easy access to various attractions, defiantly ready to welcome more visitors. Ah, oh, this is definitely translated from French. It's fantastic. And that's really the heart of this complete change of accessibility strategy to offer guests with motor, visual, or auditive disabilities a complete and satisfactory experience. As a result, almost all these non price attractions will become accessible to everyone. Um, in park, guests with visual impairments will be able to use free audio description via the Audio Spot app. Available this fall for restaurants and this winter for attractions, both in French and English. Wow. That's cool. Look at that go. Um, uh, some more changes in rethinking the system. This is on Paris model, modeled its reasoning on the latest French legislation. As a result, a, disab a disabled guest is no longer required to be accompanied to enter the parks, but it's still recommended. Uh, a free ticket will no longer be offered to the companion of a disabled guest. Well, okay. Disneyland Paris will instead extend a 25% discount on tickets for the disabled guests, currently 10% on their companion. I mean, I get that. If they were mandating that you have to have yeah. someone with you, then you they, like you shouldn't have to pay for that person to be there as well. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so yeah, and then also there is, uh, in the picture, in the DLP report tweet, there's one of those sign language interpreters from the Bridelands, but it actually doesn't mention anything about deaf people in the thing nice. so that's great cool. uh so yeah that's apparently updated accessibility at dlp nice very nice so moving over stateside um disney genie launched today today yeah um i haven't seen a whole lot about it so i haven't seen it like vlogs right because obviously it's only launched today like now like right now as we speak that's when they're doing it <laughs> yeah so um but we did get an announcement of the individual attractions uh, of the attractions in each park that were being given the individual lightning lanes so in magic kingdom that's seven doors mine train and space mountain which i thought was interesting um but i assume that's just going to switch to tron yeah it's really very it. soon yeah um in epcot it's currently remy's ratatouille adventure and frozen ever after i'd imagine one of those will get swapped out for guardians later next knowing, year sorry just knowing that we don't have to queue to go see ratatouille is just great <laughs> <laughs> i'm like don't need to do that. don't need to you don't need to look at <laughs> yeah uh, in Hollywood Studios, Rise of the Resistance, and then Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And then in Animal Kingdom, it is Avatar Flight of Passage and Expedition Everest. So, um, Oh, when we go, Ex Expedition Everest is closed. So I oh, wonder, yeah. will they move it to another ride? Uh, I wonder. Also, yeah, I was sad. They cl it closes um, the day we arrive. Oh, okay. Or the day before we arrive or something. <laughs> I was I like, think... no. <laughs> I think also on the universal side of things, I think Mummy is closed when you're there as well. Oh, what a pity. I <laughs> was so excited to go on that ride. Were you not? No. <laughs> Why? Ed was, Ed was excited. He'll probably be disappointed. Uh, it's a fun coaster though. Yeah, okay. Like that. The theme of the Mummy in general. I'm just like, no, thanks. Um, did you know that Barnstormer has a lightning line? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To be fair, like we're used to DLP where it's like only like the big, big attractions have fast right. pass. So, so Whereas funny. Nearly like I don't think there's a single attraction in Disney World that doesn't have some form of fast pass. Yeah. yeah. So, but I just I was like, really, you reimagined this whole thing and you left it there. <laughs> yeah. What a waste of signage. <clears throat> um, but anyway. Yeah, I haven't looked a whole lot into Lightning Lane. I'm not going to, the, to Disney World anytime soon. But what are your thoughts on a KP? Because obviously this is going to impact you. I'm excited to see how people find it in the next couple of months before mm -hmm. we go. Um, like the initial thing to come out this morning was that the standby queue was faster than Lightning Lane. But that Ooh. was literally like when the park opened. Okay. So fair. obviously, like if you walk onto an attraction, 
in the morning, it's going to be a 10 minute wait. That's just yeah. physics. Um, so I'm excited to see how people find it and how people use it, especially because the week we go, the, the two weeks that we go, one of them is going to be quite busy because of the marathons and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which is fine. I'm meant to be prepared for it. I'll probably not, I'll probably make sure I'm in the opposite park on the days. It's fine. Um, but when people use it during busy times, I'm excited to see if enough people are using it that it actually makes a difference or are not that many people using it. So it doesn't make a difference or yeah. how people feel about it. Um, I'm honestly hesitant to trust any form of vlogger or influencers perspective on this because they always have a very skewed vision of things because they live there. So True. they're always like, oh, it's fine. Like I wouldn't pay for it. And it's like, yeah, but you get to, you have the chance to write every single day of your life. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? Um, and then also, I just don't trust some of them. I don't think some of them should be allowed to drive a car, let alone. That's fair. I would usually <laughs> like, I would generally trust the days on stuff like that because they yeah. are travel agents. Yeah, they're like, usually quite good at for, having yeah. that perspective but also they're also they make a point of not just going to the media events and being like everything's great if they go to a media event they don't review anything because they can't give their honest opinion about it unless they're paying for it and I'm like fair which yeah so um so yeah basically I'm excited to see how it goes uh if it look if it works and you can really get a lot more done we'll probably pay for it like yeah we just will like we're not gonna go again in the next three years i'd say minimum yeah so what's an extra whatever it is 170 quid or something per exactly. person it's not really that much yeah. um i am still a bit annoyed that it's only two attractions per day that still quite annoys me i feel like that's unnecessary i feel mm-hmm. like once you use it you should be able to get a new one um mm-hmm. i think that's a bit cheap but yeah, I'm interested. I'm also interested to just see how people, if the actual, like the regular genie service, if that actually helps you with your day. Yeah. Because the genie service is like, oh, you want to do these five rides today. We're going to tell you when the best time is to do them all. Mm. Um, but then the other side of that is I don't really trust Disney. I am a big conspiracy theorist on this thing that they are pushing up the standby wait times so that people will buy Lightning Lane. <laughs> um because they do lie about wait times like that's a fact they always lie about wait times it's never yeah. a true wait time so i'm like mm, are they gonna like hence like why they put rise the resistance off of boarding passes so that people would have to pay for lining lane i'm like yeah can i even little feckers yeah so i know i'll see like they'll definitely be like teething issues to start with anyway which is why they're getting all like these influencers and stuff to be like hey try it um but yeah, I will, I'll know, I'll definitely know by December if we're going to use it or not, because yeah. that'll have been enough fucking shite about it. Yeah. Or it'll be end. doing so poorly that it won't exist anymore. <laughs> I, I I would love for that to be the case, but I somehow yeah. don't think it will. Neither do I, but I dream, I dream. But yeah. And then I think the only other thing that we were going to talk about with regards to Disney World and any of the American parks was just the 50th in general and what are what what's your thoughts uh, it looks pretty shit <laughs> it really looks like they put no effort in whatsoever <laughs> there was yeah. no special opening day ceremony which even though i wasn't there was devastated they had a cut down version of mickey's celebration thing welcoming thing wasn't even the full thing yeah uh, it was like a two minute version of it and then everyone went about their day and that was it Um, I just I don't understand why like nobody likes the bobs we're we're well aware the bobs should have been there the bobs should have been there for the opening ceremony Josh DeMauro should have been there for the opening ceremony they had like I watched so many vlogs about it like Bob Gurr and like loads of Imagineers were in the park for the day get them up on the stage like there was a bunch of opening day cast members there get them up on the stage like yeah people want to see stuff like that like especially if they're going to be in the park anyways get them there like make a big deal of them especially i who was i think it was in one of tim tracker's vlogs he was showing the piano player outside casey's who's been playing outside casey's for 50 years get that man up on the stage and let people celebrate him like it would have cost them nothing extra to do that it's so weird how it's it's really unfortunate timing because obviously the pandemic 
hit Disney. So they have no money. Yeah. Um, but then also, like, you've obviously been planning the 50th way before the pandemic. Or the problem is that they weren't planning it. Yeah. And they were like, oh, shit, we should probably do something about that. And it's just like, it literally feels like from the actual, like, 50th birthday day to like enchantment which is enchantment which is like the 50th celebration it literally feels like they don't give a shit that it's 50 years old no like (laughs) a lot of a lot of what i've seen about enchantment um is that there is no reference to walt or roy because roy was the one that opened up disney world there's no mention of either of them in it there's no mickey mouse in it there's no characters that span the 50 years that the park has been open it's not reflective of the characters that have been in the parks for the 50 years it's very much the lot it's from like the 90s onward and it's like that's only 30 years that's not the whole story and granted they're like they're never going to be able to please everyone like if they did all classic characters people that only like new characters wouldn't be happy but there is a way of like having everyone or a good like spread of characters across the the kind of Disney history, but to not include anything to do with Walt and to not include any, any, any even like smidge of Mickey Mouse in it. Like, like lads, come on. 50 years of Magic Kingdom and you've not put Mickey Mouse in. Like, I just, like who, like think oh, of dude. all the stupid white men this had to go through for them to be like, yeah, that looks great. Well, I love, yeah, let's put that up on the castle and have it, have as our show for 18 months. And Normally Mickey's all they think about. Kick happy ever, <laughs> kick happy ever after out of it. Like, fucking idiots like they're just so stupid like i hate them all even josh tomorrow he can go suck one like oh he's just like they're all stupid they're ruining it and it's annoying yeah like they had a special when the when they did the preview of enchantment fucking christina aguilera was there and the bobs were there for that and i'm like and you couldn't show up on the morning like what like do you remember when they had that big celebration in disneyland quite recently they had fucking every character to ever exist in that the Disneyland Paris 25th anniversary was so much better than what they did for that 50th. Yes. Like, like just... DLP was like, here's my Rolodex of characters. I'm going to put every, <laughs> every single one, even, character you haven't even thought of. We're going to ship them from everywhere and we're going to put them down Main Street. Like, come on. Like, it's mad. I'm like, obviously I know they can't have parades, but like their 50th cavalcades are the Move It, Shake It, Dance It, cavalcades but like iridescent <laughs> i feel like the, they pay they must have paid someone millions to think of the word iridescent and then they, that's all they had and that's They're all they could on that and they were like well shit we paid so much for this stupid fucking color this is all we have so uh the castle will be in our our main piece and that, that's kind of it we'll just hope for the best yeah so Um, I haven't seen Enchantment obviously in person and Lord knows when I will but from what I have seen it looks quite lackluster Um, but yeah and I can't even remember the name of the Epcot one what's the Epcot one? Mm, Harmonious? Yes I haven't watched that in full but I know a lot of people don't like it I might watch Harmonious I've heard it's pretty shit so I'll probably watch it before I go I don't really care about that one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i watched i watched a vlog where an imagineer was talking about the concept of harmonious and it was they went to each of the countries that's in world showcase and said here's a disney song that's related to a movie that is from your country ish questionable um please record this in the style that is native to your country but it's kind of like <laughs> what what <laughs> why wouldn't you ask them to give a native song yeah. <laughs> and it's just very strange it's it doesn't seem very Ep- oh, i don't know it's just weird i'm not I'm just I'm heard not that fan. it's not very epcot and it doesn't mm. actually do much for yeah. the ridiculousness that's in the lake yeah have you watched enchantment harmonious sandy what's your thoughts um, I haven't watched Harmonious. I've watched Enchantment and meh. But, but it's not the same as like seeing it in person though. Yeah. You know? So I'm not going to be rated or anything because watching it on YouTube is just not the same. No, I feel like 
okay even if it's like your first time watching illuminations like if you if you're watching fireworks in real life i feel like it's always it's different. In, yeah it just feels different mm-hmm. um i had a dream in the night that i walked into magic Kingdom <clears throat> and started crying i mean kate that's gonna happen in like two and a half months i mean so... if i don't if i don't cry i think i need to go to the doctor like because there's clearly something emotionally wrong with me like <laughs> i'm gonna walk into dlp that i've been in 10 bajillion times and i'm gonna cry i know for certain i'm gonna be like it's been so long <laughs> so if you don't cry um, walking into magic kingdom i'm concerned me too um but yeah i just thought it was really funny that um that night where they live streamed enchantment uh every single comment was like oh happily ever after bring it back bring it back now this is shit yeah. this is shit <laughs> um yeah. But yeah, obviously I'm not gonna watch before I go. I'll probably enjoy it when I'm there. Yeah. But it is annoying that it doesn't feel like a 50th celebration. Yeah, it doesn't and like don't get me wrong, I get it. Like I think some people's expectations for what the 50th celebration was gonna be were probably set a bit too high. Mm. But I feel like like 50 years is significant and there should have been an opening day ceremony like there should have been something akin to the 25th anniversary celebration that they did in dlp because like i'm sorry if you're getting outshone by dlp you really need to question yourself yeah covid or no covid like (laughs) nah so i do think they kind of it it just felt very half-assed yeah (laughs) but then also i feel like you're right like i feel like the build-up was too much because this is an 18 month celebration yeah and now i feel like it's kind of over like obviously it's not and i won't feel like that when i'm there but like as someone who's like criticizing it from the outside i'm like well okay we're done now because they've not done anything exciting no. or anything that's gonna like last i i feel like by the time enchantment like enchantment's been running for 18 months yeah. people are gonna be very tired of it and be like not like happily ever after like i feel like yeah it, people are saying that it doesn't have the rewatchability that Happy Ever After ever did. Yeah. And I feel like, again, with like the DLP 25th, like so much changed on that day. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like there was, it was like the kickoff and there was that massive celebration that started on the 12th. And then we got a brand new parade. We got a brand new fireworks show on that day. Don't get me wrong. We all hate the fireworks show, but it still was a whole, like the whole kind of park thing changed. Whereas with Disney World, they've done Enchantment two days before and there is no new parade. As you said, the cavalcade is just the Mickey's 90th move it, shake it thing. They're just, some of them are wearing different costumes. Not all the characters are wearing different costumes. So it's not even like that's different. So it's like, yeah, they've brought out all this merch and there's like food and stuff like that, but they do that constantly. There's constantly new merch. There's yeah. constantly 10 bajillion collections. There's constantly 17 different hot dogs and cupcakes and shit like that. Like that's not new. Whereas I think if there had been a brand new, brand new parade, brand new fireworks, boom, starting on that day, then that would have been different. But it was kind of like nothing, nothing, nothing was new. Yeah. Um, and then also all those fucking idiots who were screaming at each other over fucking purple cups. And then people went into the shops the next day and there was fucking thousands of them. <laughs> oh, I was, I was like, the day I watched the video, I was like, oh my God, that's awful. But then the next day when I saw a TikTok of some woman strolling into creations and she was like, oh, hey, hey, merch. <laughs> <laughs> like I ju- unless it, it's like a dated like I was there day of pin like they didn't even have those I know. there was no like I was, was here no on buttons. the 50th anniversary I celebrated the 50th at Disney World they didn't even have any of that shit no it's just like, like a why 40, are you 40 dollar fucking Starbucks tumbler I'm like what are you doing yeah it's wild from me like i make stupid purchases all the time 40 dollar 40 dollar starbucks don't worry i don't think so no get back in your box but yeah i think i think that's everything for the news am i right uh yeah basically iridescent can get in the bin and i want tron to open that's that open tron open tron right fucking get your finger out and open tron because in the time it's taken you to do all this shit Universal has built a whole fucking roller coaster. 
And that's that's the closing statement <laughs> from KP. <laughs> so now that we've spoken about news for ages. Uh, Sandy, the reason why you're here is to talk about doing DLP whilst pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so what were you, I suppose, no, what were you the, kind of expecting? From the moment you woke up the day before your flight, <laughs> it was a blow by blow every minute <laughs> until the moment you arrived. <laughs> she, she will. I asked Sandy, because I, I won't lie, for my trip in December, I have paid attention to like nothing to do with like any of the stuff going through the airport, anything to do with Charles de Gaulle, anything to do again. Like I have paid attention to nothing because I was like, Sandy's going like two months before I go. Sandy will give me a blow by blow account. And Sandy, I think, has sent me about 40 minutes worth of voice notes doing exactly that. So sorry, not, sorry. not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> so what were your expectations? Like, were there things that you had like planned ahead of time? What were you kind of what did you think it would be like going pregnant? Uh, stupidly I thought it would be no different apart from not being able to go on a lot of attractions which I knew anyway boy did I underestimate it and Um, actually sorry I should probably ask when you went to DLP how far along were you just to give people some context uh so 26 weeks so at the end of my sixth month so (laughs) about to hit seven months pregnant um And when I booked it, I booked it like as if we were doing DLP normally. So, you know, four days, really, really early flight, whole day in the park, late flight home. (laughs) I mean, we toyed with staying on site and I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm not a fucking invalid. I can walk. We'll stay off site, stay somewhere nice, cheap and cheerful. We'll walk every day. Lads, I was bollocks. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) I can like... (laughs) I think the end of the first day, I could not move. Like, no, I totally underestimated it. We were doing up on 30,000 steps a day. And I kind of had that moment where I looked at himself and was like, what the fuck was I thinking? Excuse my French, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Um, We swear on this all the fucking time. (laughs) But yeah, I hadn't expected it to be any different. And it wasn't like really, really different, but... I really underestimated the toll it would have taken on me. Okay. Like completely. But yeah. <laughs> um like what what do I even where do I even start? Um I didn't plan on getting the easy access card. Okay. And I ended up getting it. Um so what so obviously they're they're changing it now, but which pass were you able to get as a pregnant person? The orange pass. Okay. So easy access. So it's like the one for not permanent disabilities. Yes. Um, it was on our first day. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to need this. There's like the queues are minimal. It's not busy. I'm not going to bother. But he had decided himself that he was going to renew his annual pass. So while we were collecting, we were in the queue to get his privilege tickets. And he was like, do you know what? I'm just going to get an annual pass because we are going to be back next year. So I was like, right, fair enough. He was getting his AP. And because we were right by the studios, I decided to go in to studio services and just get the orange pass just in case, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just to have it. Um, So we were there from the Tuesday until the Friday and Friday Halloween started. Mm -hmm. So I didn't end up using the pass until the Thursday. Okay. So I didn't need it the beginning of the week. Um, but Wait, if I just ask yeah. to get the pass, do you, did you just have to be like, hi, I'm clearly pregnant? Or like, did you have to like show them anything else? <laughs> did you just have to turn profile? <laughs> yeah, because obviously like to get those kind of passes, you need like a doctor's note or whatever. Did, or did they like want to like poke it and prove it? Or like... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you did need, you did, you needed your doctor's note. Now I had my notes with me in case anything went wrong or if Fair. I okay. had to go to hospital or whatever I had all my notes with me and um, you needed ID like well, aren't you okay. legally supposed to carry ID with you in France anyway yeah yeah on those stupid rules <laughs> yeah um like it was obvious when I walked in they were like Heaven yeah. help you. I was like <laughs> I'm here to get this and they were like oh yeah we can see <laughs> you know we had the you know how far along are you chat and the whole lot 
and they were like we need to see a doctor's note so I had my hospital notes with me pulled them out that was fine and they were like we need ID did I have my passport with me no I left it in the hotel but my annual pass was called the police (laughs) this madame (laughs) who is she uh well you the your annual pass that's great that's good yeah. to take that well, I mean like it's photograph your names on it mm. my name is you would have needed yourself. your ID to get your AP so yeah, yeah. I got yeah. It. Perfect. so it was fine and then they marked one carer but like one extra person because himself was with me so yeah and they went through it they told me what it entailed but not everyone in the park seems to be on the same page with regards what your orange pass lets you do do you mean by okay. cast members or other? Yeah, cast members. Oh, well, that's okay. stupid. How DLP? Please tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like the the attractions that I can go on as a pregnant woman is Orbitron, obviously it was closed. Small World, Dumbo, Buzz, Cars, the Carousel, Meet and Greets, Molly Brown, do you know, that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one meet and greet that we were going to use it for was... For the first half of the week, the Marvel characters in the studios. And then come Friday, the villains were coming in. Because mm-hmm. the queue there is nuts. Like, it's always mad. Um, so we went up and presented the orange pass at the guys at the front. And as I'm sure we've all seen them do, they give you a return time. And then to come back at the exit. But they were like, no, you can't use that here. <laughs> I was like, "What? Okay, uh, I, I can't." Already, I, can't... I can feel myself wanting to have an argument. Oh. <laughs> I was like, "Right, okay, I'm not going to be able to stand for up on two hours. Like, my back would be killing me." So mm-hmm. they were like, "What we can do is give you the seat. There's like benches up by the door, but the person with you still has to go through the regular queue, and you can just sit there and wait." <laughs> so it makes no sense yeah I mean I'd be happy with the seat but like Bing would have to go and queue for the two hours and I'd just have to sit there and wait no because what if you need to go to like the bat no you've missed the point you've missed the point (laughs) and I mean I had to go to the bathroom a lot so like (laughs) what um so I was like right okay and then I was like no that's not the way that should Mm -hmm. be Checked it with, you know, the information guys in the blue jackets that are not around. And they were like, no, you can use it here. I was like, right, okay. So tomorrow I'm going to try and I'm going to use it there. Went again the following day and they were like, no, different guys, same story. So I just was like, right, fuck it. We're not seeing them that trip. If you want to go see them, go. I'm I'm not going to. Yeah. So we forgo meeting the Marvel characters and the villains. That was the only kind of... I can't believe you didn't share that someone. I was just like, I don't care. I'm happy to be here. It's been a year. Fuck is bye. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, just I, I wasn't having it like it. You should write a letter. They'll give you something. <laughs> <laughs> I was a pregnant lady and they refused. Blah, blah. <laughs> I also refused to be that person. <laughs> Do you know, like Fair. the angry pregnant woman? I was like, no, <laughs> not a hope. Um, that's the only kind of dodgy kind of aspect of using the card okay like I had one not gripe with it but when we were using buzz and it was on the Friday the queue was really really long it was out into the switchback queues outside um and it was raining so we were like look we'll just use the orange pass we went up to the exit um and the guy was like oh I'm not gonna let you through the exit I'm gonna let you through the premier access line so I was like okay but the premier access line just lets you in just to the inside bit so it oh yeah so even if I was paying for that I'd be pretty pissed off because you still had to queue inside from like the start of the inside Mm -hmm. yeah that's hardly a skip (laughs) right the outside bit is like max 15 minutes yeah max if it's full yeah oh DLP yeah, I was a bit I was a bit miffed because everything else you got to go on at the end. You know, yeah. Like Dumbo, you got to go on at the exit. Um the Molly Brown, I went on it again that day that it was raining, Bing was on Big Thunder. And I used it there, but purely because there was a seat. Oh, fair, fair, fair. fair. So they don't it's not that you get in like 
ahead of people. It's just you get to sit at the side where there's a bench. So I was yeah. like, right. That's fair. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we didn't really use it other than that. I think I used it on Small World once. Again, it was the Friday. It was really busy. That was it. Do you think it was do you think you didn't use it because the like normal wait times were just that little bit shorter than normal? Yeah, yeah. Like um actually the only other thing we did use it on was meet Mickey and Friends um on the Friday when Halloween started. Again, there's no seat there, and this is right. just being traffic, but they let you in the end and they're like it's a 10-15 minute wait, which is obviously better than an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But again, I could have done with a seat seat yeah like it just a seat there and not just me like if someone was on crutches or something just yeah, yeah, there, yeah. you know shifting their weight it like it's uncomfortable but um yeah for the rest of the week the the times were really really low we didn't have to wait for anything really like I think the longest himself waited for big thunder was 15 minutes oh wait right. yeah it was hey, really that's really like really the the length of walking up and down it, all the stairs exactly. <laughs> very true exactly very true so how how was it in general like I know you said like obviously you would have to go to the the toilet more often like how was just kind of navigating the park in general being pregnant fine like I was on my own quite a bit because again I couldn't go on a lot of the attractions which which was great I just walked around taking photographs and things um Mm -hmm. while being went on everything um it was fine just dodging around walking around every so often I'd sit on a bench like it was it was nice to just stroll and kind of take it at a, an easier pace okay. um I did sit outside Big Thunder one of the days and I had a lady sit beside me and just decide to start smoking when there was a smoking area oh, my God. right across the way and I just kind of turned and looked at her and I looked down and she just turned her head and I just walked off I was like right okay what a bitch. oh my god <laughs> I'll call it out. What a bitch. (laughs) Absolutely ignorant. Um, Jesus Christ. But other than that, it was fine. Like it really was, say, the end of the day when we would go to restaurants. Now, I mean, I knew I wouldn't be able to do anything else. So I had booked restaurants for every night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'd sit down for our meal at eight o'clock every night. And then we'd go to get up. And getting up an hour to two hours later was a struggle. (laughs) Oh no. Because <laughs> I've, I've been suffering with pretty bad pelvic pain anyway. I've been doing physio and stuff for it. So that's fine. But I hadn't anticipated that walking from really early in the morning to really late at night and then stopping and having to go again would kill me. It did. Right. It was horrible. But should look, we got over it. We were in this. It was fine. <laughs> fine. So. Obviously, um, most of your non-jacket related uh, social media handles relate to glow teenies. Was it weird being in DLP and not having a glow teeny? Yes, yes it was weird. That's all I wanted. And I was even like half tempted to ask for it. It really was just orange juice and a glow cube. So oh. no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't great. Not quite the same. No, it big me, so I couldn't even like have a taste of one. So the, no, yeah, no, it was it was horrible. <laughs> oh no, no no. I so if someone was considering going pregnant, are there any like do's or don'ts that you would have, or anything you'd recommend? Comfortable shoes. Don't wear Converse something with support um if you're going to do extra magic time think again that don't just okay. don't <laughs> yeah if you're thinking of it down <laughs> look in the mirror get your priorities yeah. straight and sit your ass back down that bed <laughs> especially if you're like me or like us like who do the park from it opens mm-hmm. till it ends and don't stop And if you're that sort of person and now suddenly you're pregnant, you kind of have to just think to yourself, yeah, you're you're not going to be able to do that. (laughs) And I thought I would, I thought I would, honestly, because I've had no hassle. Like my pregnancy has been pretty easy. Like touch wood, it keeps going that way. I've had no issues 
whatsoever with tiredness or anything like that since the beginning. Um, but no, DLP took it out of me. It, it was a lot. Do you right. think if you'd have waited any l- later in your pregnancy that you would have been able to do it? Or do you think you were kind of like at the cusp? I think I was at a, a the perfect time to go. Maybe I should have gone a little bit earlier, but I kind of wanted the cute pregnancy photos as well. So <laughs> <That's fair>. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the well, book. <laughs> there's you your compromise. To touch a Halloween. <laughs> um, but no, I wouldn't have left it any later, I don't think, because it would just start to get uncomfortable it's a, a long day unless you had planned to do shorter days um no now do you think you could do dlp as a pregnant woman with a child um yeah yeah okay. like yeah. obviously people do it but like from your perspective of how you felt like yeah you like depending on what age the child would be as well because three and a half I'm thinking yeah, three and a half. yeah you're restricted to a certain <laughs> amount <laughs> very specific I, don't know why I, had that in my head. I mean if you were doing it alone as say a single parent pregnant with a child it would be difficult yeah true, 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 true. once you have someone else with you that can go on the attractions that you can't go on even the kiddie attractions like the likes of the teacups um snow white like any of those, like I couldn't go on anything with a lap bar, anything that um, if it broke down, if getting off it would be considered unsafe for me, I couldn't do. Um, so from that perspective, you'd need an, an extra person with you. But I think it'd be fine doing it with. with you go on pirates? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm like, does that drop count as unsafe? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I didn't realize it. I was just, literally, once he said that, I was like rifling through them all in my head. And then I was like, hmm, pirate seems to be like a middling one. <laughs> okay, now, no judgment here, right? Pirates, they say, is not suitable during pregnancy. Okay. I asked Why? Um, because I, I just wanted to know what was the reason behind anyone and I wanted to know if it was because of the drops um, it's not it's evacuation so just getting out of it yeah there's certain points like when an attraction breaks down it runs to a certain point and breaks down at that certain point it's like mm-hmm. a safety thing and there's one specific point that you have to walk across a plank mm-hmm. and then kind of get lifted <laughs> to the other side <laughs> Oh my gosh, um, hilarious. Yeah, wild. It's actually not too far away from Captain Jack's, like it's in that area. Um, so I was like, right, okay. And left it at that. Then one of the days I was just wearing a plain black dress and it didn't, I didn't really look very <laughs> bumpy in it. And I was like, will I chance it? Will I just, will we just go on pirates? Um, and Bing was like, well, I'm going to go. And I'm like, maybe I'll just walk through the queue line with you. And then. Yeah, exit. and then just exit. Yeah. yeah. I didn't exit. I got on. <laughs> well, no, I did so the right first. And then I exited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did the right first and I exited. Um, and it was totally fine. I felt totally safe. It wasn't very jolty. There wasn't anywhere. Do you know, like I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe at the end, you know, where the boats kind of bang into each other. I, yeah. That was still quite soft. The drops are quite soft. I just hoped to God it didn't break in. So I went in it once. One sneaky, sneaky, <laughs> sneaky ride. To be fair, in the like hundreds of times I've been on Pirates of the Caribbean in any of the parks, never in my life have I had a breakdown. And I've never even heard of it breaking down. No. It's never even been like, oh, Pirates is down because of an evacuation. Like never have I heard that. I've seen a breakdown. Oh, okay. Myself and Lisa, when we uh, went March, not last year, year before, we were eating in Captain Jack's and saw them evacuate. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, but that's it. Like it, it's not as if it was big thunder. Do you know the breaks down all the time? What were they gonna do? Leave you on the boat because you were pregnant? Like, <laughs> no, my bitch. <laughs> Have it there. <laughs> Deal. I'm sure you'll float. You'll be grand. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, yes. Um, yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that was my one little naughty, sneaky, felt like I got something that I love, love it. in. Fair. So, 
yeah. love it absolutely love it I think the worst thing was like I love Terror Terror but didn't mind wa- watching it or waiting for him to come off it it broke my heart to not go on Big Thunder I love Big yeah. Thunder we love Big Thunder so that was that was hard to not have yeah fun. but oh. of like all the rides like that's probably the shakiest like, yeah Oh yeah. god, yeah, no, That's and like really gonna... around stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, that would not. Like, be I good. didn't miss anything else apart from the Glotini. There was nothing else I thought. Oh, I missed out, or this trip wasn't <laughs> as good as my previous trips. But Big Thunder kind of kind of hit the nail on the head. Okay, so I imagine when you go back next year, Big Thunder is the first thing you're going to do. <laughs> oh yeah, big yeah. big time. <laughs> Funny um, story, actually. Oh, fun. But it's a bit like. Is taboo the right word? It's a bit. Oh. <laughs> no, we already heard the pirate story. <laughs> One of the days, I will name no names, so I'm not incriminating anybody. Oh. Um, One of the days, himself was queuing for Space Mountain. And I was on Main Street getting the princesses going by and just, you know, hearing the music, watching the things. Um, and he texted me and was like, Okay, I'm after meeting someone in the queue. This person works on Big Thunder. Um, this person's finished work. We're going to go and do Star Tours. I was like, cool. I will meet you at Star Tours in however many minutes. So I go and meet the two of them in Star Tours after they got off. And they were like, we're going to go and do some thrill rides together because you can't. I was like, okay, cool. Um but they were going to go over to Orsi Racer. Okay. And I'm not, I'm trying not to even get a gender here. Um, this person <laughs> automatically went the way a cast member would go. Mm-hmm. And Bing was like, Yeah, I can't go that way. And this person was like, Zip up your jacket. Yeah, you can. Um, <laughs> brought, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brought him, you know. You know the storybook store? Yeah. Yeah. You know the way there's like an entrance there? Yeah. Um, brought him right through that way, past a cast member shop, like past security people, the whole, and got out like right in the studios. And he was like, Sandy, it was it wasn't even a minute walk. It's so fucking close. Oh my god. That's yeah. so DLP. Thank God to go it. backstage. I love it. <laughs> He got to go backstage, got all the info. I was like, did you take any pictures? He was like, no, I was afraid. Well, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true, true. But um, yeah, they met up the following day as well when this person was finished their shift to go around and do a couple of things. So he's he's been yeah. backstage. He knows the things. I love that kind of shit in DLP because it's just oh. like, they're just like, there's just such B-grade cast members in the best way. Like, oh yeah. When I went and I still had my, sure, it doesn't matter when I, when I went and I still had my cast member ID, um, they would take that as a form of fast pass when you went to all the fast pass queues, and oh. you just like showed your cast member ID, and they were like, yeah, well, it's like you shouldn't do that for the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Love but it. it was always so funny. You'd always be like like meekly like showing it and they like roll their eyes and be like, okay, go on. Go on. <laughs> Love it. Oh, Love amazing. it. I just like oh, it's just great. It's like they're they're so like what what are you gonna do? This is this not Paris. What are you gonna do? Shut us down. Yeah. <laughs> We've been so through funny. the roughest shit and we're still here. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Exactly. So you've obviously done done your trip now, and this will be your last trip before you are officially a mother and have a child on the outside um Mm -hmm. have you any like plans for your first trip with little bean are there any like must do's for you um actually are you gonna stay on site because you're normally an off-site kind of gal do you know what yeah because i've stayed on site so much it's just i'm like "Eh, it's more cost effective to stay off site yeah but i think first time with little bean he or she, when they arrive, and um, will definitely be on site. Fair. Yeah. So, so it's extra stress. For yeah. No it, reason. <laughs> like, Why? Somewhere easy to walk back to if, you know, we have to. And I've yeah. kind of learned that yeah, I'm going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. 
um but no the only thing that i re i'm really excited for is like that family pic in front of the castle oh cute yeah i, I can't believe i'm saying this because if you had to talk to me about three or four years ago i'm like kids in disney what the fuck are you doing leave them at home go <laughs> And now I'm like, I can't wait to bring a baby. Cute. So, yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. We're hoping to go around May, June-ish. So a baby, baby. Yeah. Baby, baby. Cute. Baby, baby. And my birthday, hopefully, if we can go at the end of May, beginning of June. Sweet. The only thing is, I've done that time of year before. It's be so is. hot for a baby. So hot. It's so busy. But we'll manage. Oh, but then you get to have a buggy. Beep beep. Oh, beep beep. Watch your ankles. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> oh. Get them away. <laughs> and you don't have to carry anything because you can put it under the buggy. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Think of all the delf. Think of all the delf oh, you can yeah. fit in the all bottom the of a buggy. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Me throwing the nappies out. Look at her, she's <laughs> buzzing. We can buy more nappies. It's not on board right now. You can cushion the Delph with the nappies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Yes. There you go. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait. Can't wait. Do you hmm. have um any summarizing points or tips or anything? Basically, don't stay off site because you can't walk. Get yeah. the orange pass and stand up for your rights. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, how did oh how did you find eating? Was was food okay? Food was great. I mean, Sandy's a foodie. <laughs> no, I know, <laughs> but just just double checking. Like, um, the only thing that I probably would normally eat that I couldn't eat was cheese boards because the cheese boards in France are a lot of soft cheeses, a lot yeah. of blue cheese, and that kind of a thing but I tend to only like them when I'm drinking wine so I couldn't do that either okay so it was fine um and a lot of the anti-pasty plates like with you know smoked meats and things Mm -hmm. like and their smoked salmon is like barely smoked which I normally love it's fine but um obviously that wasn't that wasn't a thing but no food was great like food was great I ate a lot (laughs) And so you should have. <laughs> exactly. Sinead, are you going to go to downtown when you go? I really want to. Um, so I want to do both of the restaurants, but I think we'll do downtown this time around and then mm-hmm. Manhattan for the next trip. Because Manhattan, we're going to be staying in Hotel New York and it's also going to be Adam's birthday. So I'd ideally like to book the fancy restaurant whilst we're yeah. staying there and for his birthday. Yeah. Um, so yeah if so long as they eventually maybe open up reservations i would ideally like to go to downtown downtown and then one of the more like themed restaurants in the park are kind of the only two bookings that i'm hoping to get for this trip i was so surprised at how much we loved downtown like you know me i love a fancy pants meal um so we ate in manhattan the night before and i thought yeah manhattan was great loved it downtown blew it out of the water 100%. I'm excited. The food was better. The service was better. We stayed there way longer. It was lovely. Yeah, I'm excited to go. I think it should be good. And they have a rake lot of veggie and vegan options. So that's great as well. So yeah, buzzing. Buzzing. I don't think I've anything else to ask. Do you, KP? It was very interesting. I loved it all. Excellent. Sandy, do you want to plug your socials, plug your jackish business? Sure, sure. Um, if you want me to paint on your denim, hit me up on Instagram. Yeah, it and... doesn't have to be a jacket. <gasps> yeah, no, just I'll, denim. I'll, I'll paint your denim. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's glitter and bows underscore I R E. There we go. Let's do <laughs> it's been a long day guys it's been a long day um so yeah i think that's pretty much everything Mm -hmm. uh thanks so much for listening guys if you want to hit us up on instagram it's at mickey waffles pod uh there's nothing there but uh (laughs) maybe soon and like definitely in january and definitely in november december december couldn't remember 
I almost said October, but we're nearly finished. That's so it couldn't have been. Yeah. Uh, so stick around until December to January time. <laughs> That'll be fucking loads. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If you're listening on an Apple device or if you're a podcast app of choice, let's you leave a review. Please do because uh, that'd be really nice and that's very helpful or you know tell a friend tell your granny and more importantly tell your dog um you can also find more of me and kp on the various other podcasts that we're on on the network i'll link them below check them out if you want to cares um so yeah that's pretty much everything for this week guys thank you so much stay safe and we'll see you next time bye bye This podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast Network.